Okay, so this is going to be a very high energy clip coming from me. Um, I'm just joking. I'm like, I'm kind of in one of those zones where it's like, I'm going to run to the convenience store, get a coffee, but I was just like, I'm going to try to be productive right now. Um, I could just restart this clip. I mean, this preface is completely unnecessary, but that's just how I'm going to improv this. So we have this 24 year old dude. He's got a mildly productive cough for three days. And you can see he's got a fever, 101.8 Fahrenheit. The gram stain shows gram positive diplococci. Now, this is strep pneumo. This is just something you have to memorize for US simile, okay? Gram negative diplococci, in contrast, that's nasaria. So it could be gonorrhea, meningitis, right? But when we're talking about lung pathology, this is clearly strep pneumo, gram positive, not gram negative. So, and then the chest x ray showing us. A uh, low bar pneumonia of the right lower lobe. You can see this consolidation here, okay? This opacification. So we look at the answers. Our question is literally just which of the following anatomic structures is going to be responsible for the development of this pneumonia. Now you look at these answers, you're like, what the fuck? Okay, now the first two answers, wrong. Uh, I wrote, I gave you two capillary answers, uh, alveolar versus lymphatics. That'll throw some students off sometimes. US simile will do this, uh, where they'll give you, you know, multiple answers that are the same, and you're like, oh, it's probably one of them. Like they'll give you uh like three different types of dead space, like alveolar, anatomic, physiologic dead space, and then shunt. The answer is shunt, but you're like, oh, it's gotta be one of the dead space. They gave me three of those. Okay, so but these are both these are both wrong fucking answers. Clara cells. These are wrong. These are club cells. Okay, these are also known as bronchiolar exocrine cells. So these secrete glycosaminoglycans that protect the uh, respiratory tree just from, I guess, uh, physical abrasive damage. Okay, I've seen these show up as incorrect. Uh, this is an incorrect answer in some step one NBME question. Kolchitsky cells. These are also known as neuroendocrine cells. These literally secrete uh, hormones such as serotonin, okay? Why they're in the respiratory tree, no fucking idea, okay? But I've also seen these as a distractor. When students don't know an answer, they choose weird fucking shit. That's why these are here, okay? Because when you don't know, you're like, oh, is it Kolchitsky cell? Is it Clara cell? Wrong answers. Pores of cone. Now, that doesn't exactly help my argument because you say, how is that any less weird? Okay, but this is on one of the NBME exams. Okay, I'm not going to tell you which form. We've got the 25 through 30 forms out now. This is on one of those forms. Students say, hey, but you're telling me what's on the NBMEs. Is that artificially inflating my score? My response is, what the fuck do you think the Q banks do? Number one. And number two, what would you rather study? Stuff that's not being assessed? Okay, so you need to know what pores of cone are. These are connections between alveoli where you literally have literally pores where gas, uh, alveolar secretions, and even bacteria can pass between cells. As far as what I've read about these, uh, type two pneumocytes can form part of the pores. Okay. They don't form the entire pore, but type two pneumocytes can form part of the pores. Okay, so type 2 pneumocytes obviously being the, the cell in the lung that produces surfactant, lamellar bodies, a high yield organelle within type 2 pneumocytes that produce surfactant. And obviously type 2 pneumocytes are the stem cells of the lung. If you have lung damage, the type 2 will regenerate to form more type 1, type 1 being your gas exchange, simple squamous. But my point is, uh, you need to know what pores of cone are. They allow for the passage of bacteria between adjacent alveoli. And this enables the development of low bar pneumonia. They're more common, and uh, or I should say, not more common. They're they're fully developed by adulthood, and this is one of the reasons why uh, low bar pneumonias uh, do not form as readily in children. I guess there's a terminology called round pneumonias. That's what I've read. Okay, in children that you can get a different shape due to the pores of cone in children not being as fully developed. So know what these are, okay? Random as fuck. It's not our opinion that matters. It's what shows up on the actual exams that does. I'm obviously gonna make more content, okay? So if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel.
I appreciate your time. That's it.